Hello, and DreamRJ here. Okay, so, uh, first of all I would just like to say that I am sorry that I haven't done any videos again <laughs> for two weeks. I have been really uh, busy with loads of other stuff and I just have not had the time again to do any videos. So, uh, this is, I'm sorry but this is like the next video so basically this next video is going to be another hammer tutorial because I've had some requests uh, that they wanted me to do another video for hammer uh, on lighting so without further ado let's open up this tutorial map uh, so basically I'm, I'm going to just in this tutorial I'm just going to like explain uh, how, how you can do lighting and and it for different themes like styles like underground, destroyed, overgrown and whatnot. Uh, there's loads of different ways you can do lighting, uh, but the main one is usually just using a uh, light texture. So let's just hide this model a minute. Hang on, it's hidden now. Oh, because it grouped. Okay, so one hide. So let's just go on to objects. Okay, so we'll just hide this so you can see the, the brush with the light texture on this brush here. So if you're doing a clean chamber like this, uh, it's it's best to use the cool uh, texture. So if you, if, you, if you watch, when I go into the texture tool and click it, it'll tell you that I'm using the light panel cool texture. There's actually three you can, you can pick from. Uh, for the for the lights, this cool, neutral, and warm. You can use warm in destroyed and overgrown themes uh, maps if you if you if you do it using them kind of themes. But cool's the best for clean. The cool one is best for the clean maps. Uh, neutral, is, is, you can also use neutral. Neutral is, isn't too bad for, for, for pretty much most of them, the majority of themes, but cool's the, cool's the one I use the most. So, so basically, this is, this is, this is, a, this is the basic light. So, so as you can see, it, when you click it, you, you'll get light, you can click it, and then you can see here you've got texture scale, and you've got X and Y. Uh, you can see that I've got it set as 0.75. This is how you control how bright this this texture is. I did touch on this in previous tutorial videos uh, for these. So the higher you put it, so say you pull it as 1.50, so 1.50. Let's just delete the other bit and then do the same again. 1.50 then that will make it double the brightness of what it was at 0.75 I think there's no limit really, you can go up to like 99, 200, it's, it's just weird but but it's always good to stay around between like 0.25 and about 5 to 7, maybe 7.50 but it, any brighter than that it'll just be too bright and then it'll just be too crazy in the game so I, it's just best to keep messing about and, pr and testing different brightness scales to s best suit you. That you know, I mean, this is a cheating way, but you'll find the brighter you go, you'll start getting light reflections on the on the bushes, like on the walls and on the ceiling and whatnot. So it's best just to keep it at a minimum, a minimum of like between 0 0.75 and 2.50. And then you probably won't run into any reflecting reflection issues. So that's these ones uh, done. So obviously the light model, you just go into here, and then you just go into the world model, and then you're just basically just looking for the light model. So if you just type light in, it'll find all light models. See all models that you use for lighting, like these different light models these the you know there's like different ways you can do the lightings on these and there's another one and uh, what you do is you just you just put the the light texture behind it the same as as the other model that I'm using so that's that and then this model I'll I'll, I'll go and open my other map now and explain this one 
I mean, also, there's... Hang on, let me just explain this first. So, also, if you go to the entity tool, and you've got lights, so if you type light in, you get, like, a light and a light spot. These are basically... And, and if you click it in the map, you'll see, like, a light bulb appear. These are kind of, like, what you use for other types of light models. It... You can use these by themselves without any models, but then people will complain because it, it means there's light coming from nowhere and it doesn't look correct. So it's best just to use these and the light spots with... I'll just, I'll just spawn a light spot. This one. It's best to use these with other light models, and I'll show that show you that in another in a minute when I load another map up, one of my previous maps that I built. That's in the Steam Workshop. So basically, this is this the spy the light spot is like a directional light. You can change the you can change uh, the direction of it. You can change the the brightness. You can change pretty much everything, and you can change which way it di it's pointing and whatnot. So as you can see, I've just rotated it, and now it's facing that wall over there. So if you double click it, you'll get like the brightness here and the HDR brightness. But it's this one you need, and this is the brightness one. The last, the last digits at the end is what you do for the brightness. So you can set that up to whatever you want. Some people do 5,000. Some people do what ten thousand, but it's best just to, to keep it about one thousand ish. But you can do you can do anything from from what from from one <laughs> to you know whatever you know from one to to, to ten thousand if you wanted. Uh, but two hundred is minimum, so yeah. And then you can also change the color of the light, so you can just pick a color, so you can have different colored light light spot. And that's what you use to, to give more atmosphere to your maps with you doing different themes like underground or overgrown and whatnot. And you can also do the same with these models, with these this entity too, you can change the colour and so on. Okay, so without further ado, let's just let's just delete them. And let's let's close this one. Don't need to save anything. Just close that because it's annoying. Right, and then we'll open uh, elements of destruction because it's what it was my favorite map that I, I love to build. Uh, elements of destruction. Let me just find it. So just bear with me a minute. There it is. Okay. So this might take a while to load. Uh, Okay, so this is a map that I built, a co-op map that I built. I think this, yeah, this was my last co-op map that I actually built. Uh, this is my favourite map that I built. I loved it. I put so much work into this. This took me like three months to complete. And uh, it's it's just an awesome, awesome map. I love it to pieces. It's just absolutely awesome. Yeah. It's just awesome. <laughs> anyway, so without further ado, we want to go in this big area because this is where I've got different light models. So as you can see, I've got a light model here on the floor, on on the wall here, on the wall texture. So I've got them grouped. So let me just go back into objects. Okay. So there's my light model texture. So you can you can see world model light array broken. So you've got different light array models you can actually use and whatnot. And I'm using here a light spot uh, for this one. And I've got this brightness at 800 without any lighting colour. So it's just normal light colour, uh, the right colour. Uh, you can also use spotlights. And what spotlights do is, say you want to highlight a certain area uh, with a spotlight, you can you can basically just let me just create a spotlight. Uh, 
a point spotlight, I think it was called, or beam, beam spotlight, might have been beam, yeah that's the one, beam spotlight. So it's a beam spotlight, so you just go into the entity, oops, what the hell, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so if you go into entity and just type beam spotlight in, in the objects here, and then just, and then you, you can see how we disband it, so you just basically pull it into position so say we want to pull it right where that light spot is because at the end of the day we want to keep it looking as realistic as possible and we want to make it look like it's coming from one of these lights so we're just rotating it into position so you can see so I need to actually rotate it a bit down because it's this is a bit pain I can't see where it is on the minimum on here it is select let me just press X there we go is it visible now can't see where it is on here let's hide the models there it is <laughs> okay, yeah, sometimes, if you, as you can see, when you build a really big map and a really big map with loads of entities, you can see that, uh, so as you can see, I've put it perfectly in the center of that spotlight, of the light spot. So, basically, what this does, let's double click it so you can see the properties, this creates a, a spotlight, so it, it, it's like a directional beam of light. Uh, amb you know just light and it's just directional so so it's kind of so it so you, it makes a so you can see something so you can make it you can know what I mean so you can just like pit, you know bring people's attention to a certain area using these beam spotlights and whatnot and they're useful for, for various other other things as well uh, and then you can just change like the 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 length and the width of the, the beam with these and the sc colour scale and stuff with these three here at the bottom and stuff like that and then also the colour and the and what have you again you can change the colour of them so you can have different coloured beams so that's basically a, sp a beam spotlight so let's just go and unhide the props again <sighs> uh, and whatnot. so that's those things started. We've we've also got ambient light, uh, ambient lights, and and I've never really used the ambient light things. The 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 dynamic lights. I mean, I've never used the dynamic lights uh, because I always w ran into problems with them. So I just kind of avoid using them because, like I said, I just keep running into problems. So I won't I won't be explaining the the light dynamics. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's those type of lights. I mean, it's just a matter of playing around with all the different models and and getting the lighting correct for your map. Uh, and also, y you've also got the 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 lighting texture. The I forgot the name of it now. The projected texture. You've also got the projected texture. And this is another thing that creates basically projected texture. It's kind of for lighting, and it makes your rooms and shadows in your rooms just absolutely look amazing. This this entity is a must, uh, but I must warn you all that you can only use one projected texture in any area, and each area that uses one has to be completely sealed off from each other. So if you've got multiple projected textures, make sure the the two areas. So if say you've got two or three projected textures in your one VMF map, your VMF file map, then you need to make sure that they are all separated with in their own separate areas. Because if you've got more and they're not separated, then they won't ba basically they just they'll just conf conflict with each other and they just won't work. And they'll just they just won't work correctly, and they just um, and or they might not work at all. So so just bear that in mind 
and uh, it sucks that they they are limited and and people have always complained about you know the 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 fact that these are uh, are limited to just one per area in in each map uh, and whatnot but basically yeah they just are some and you can change they can do everything you can change the color again you can change the you can change the brightness scale and and you can ch also change the the, the nears and fars and whatnot to make them bigger and smaller and whatnot and then you can also change the texture name so you can change the effect of the texture as well uh, in effects so let's just go to the keywords and see if there's an effect no effects okay so let's just type effects in Okay, so yeah, you can you can you can change. You've got different effects you can just play around with by ty typing effects in the model in the texture browser window, and you can change them to to different uh, effects for your projected textures. But yeah, they are one of the best things to help with lighting and stuff in in various different types of maps and different themes and different styles. So we've done we've done this one now. So let's just close. We're not saving anything just close that a minute and then we'll just load uh, another old map that I made called scientific basis where is it not found it okay so we've got choose your destiny there and that's not the one I want to load Scientific basis, just bear with me. If only that you could speak back to me if you spot it and I don't. That would be so much better, wouldn't it? Hopefully I'll find it. <laughs> Next Celsius Saint I remember that one I built. Yeah, that was I had so many issues making that map. So many issues. There it is. Okay, so this is actually one of my most my main my, my most popular map that I ever made. This this is, uh, and it's called the Scientific Basis. I had I had some fun making this map, but it was very tedious with all the detailing because of the theme that I'm, I used to create this map in in the overgrown, destroyed kind of theme, and. Uh, yeah, it took a, a while to make it. It's not a very big map, as you can see. Uh, but it did take a long time to actually, you know, build it. So, as you can see, I've got a different kind of theme going on in here. It's it's broken, it's overgrown and whatnot. And uh, it took so long to build this map. And with the lighting I've got here, I'm using these kind of these types of lighting, just the normal lighting models. So let's have a look what texture I'm using behind. I'm sure I'm using the warm, so hide. Yeah, as you can see, you can see that it's a bit warmer colour. So if I click it, you'll see it's the. Oh no, I'm actually using the. Oh no, yes, yeah. As you can see, I'm using the warm texture because it's a uh, overgrown and it's a it's a kind of destroyed kind of chamber. It's always good to use the warm textures. And I've got the texture scale as 150 on this tech on this one here. And let's have a look at this one over here. Let's just hide all this stuff because they're in the way. So as you can see, these are models. These are these. This is what adds detail to them to to your maps. Uh, you know, I've got like moss models. You know, it's you it, it's just you you just. It's 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 so much work detailing is, and time consuming. Yeah, so this is the same 1.50 in this one as well. So so you just you just sparingly use the lighting, and I kind of cheated here as well. I was naughty, and I kind of but I wasn't that naughty because basically this texture at the top is 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 basically white. Pardon my pronunciations. I've got a, a slight lisp in my R's and W's. I can't pronounce them. So uh, 
yeah, it's basically right colour. So I, I can, you can get away with cheating without having a light model with these spotlights. And that's what I've, I've basically done here. I've, I've just basically put some spotlights near the ceiling. So it looks like the light is coming from the ceiling or from, from, from this, from this texture at the top of the, of the roof there area. And basically what this does, it brings light downwards and it just creates a really nice awesome uh, shadow and light effect and the same I've got a nice lovely projected texture here uh, that basically adds loads of light and I've got a texture scale there of 16 and it's set at 1000 in the brightness uh, so as you can see I went a bit crazy with, with the light models with the light entities but that was because I wanted to make the room just look absolutely awesome and because of the ceiling uh, I didn't really need to add any mo light model textures to them like uh, I just kept explaining so let's just quickly go into this room and it's basically just the same it's just overgrown theme and you just you just mess about with the lights and, and whatnot and yeah, it's just a matter of just experimenting and and keep compiling and keep testing, and and just keep getting and just keep messing with the, with the brightness, with the texture scales on the on the normal lights on these lights, on the lights on the floor on you know on the, on the walls, until until you until you're happy with it. So as you can see, this light is a bigger version, and I've got and this is set up text scale of brightness as, as one and one so it's just a matter of messing about and getting getting the getting your desired lighting effect it uh, also another another tip with lighting if you're making these lasers or you're making uh, the fizzler you know these the fizzlers I haven't actually got the blue light here in the middle but what you can do is you can add a light in the middle I'll quickly do that actually just to show you I'm not going to keep it but what you can do is you can do this misspelt it so you just click a light like this click it on there and then you just basically open it up change the colour so because it's blue to go with a fizzler you just click a blue colour like this and then as you can see and then what you do is you just change the brightness to about 10 or 20 let's do 20 and apply and then you just basically move it into position into the middle and then basically what that will do is it will add light around this area which just which just makes it look more realistic it, it makes it look like it's got a glow coming from the Vizsla and the same with this the same with this as you can see I've got a little red light bulb there that's to make this come alive to make it look more realistic with light coming from from the actual laser fields uh, so yeah you, it, it's so that's another another good tip for for lighting on on the fizzlers and the lasers uh, to make the rooms look more appealing and more realistic with lighting coming from them so yeah we've, I think that's pretty much all I can think of at the moment uh, if I can come up with if if I could, if I've missed anything, I'm sure people will. I'm sure my friend will let me know, and <laughs> they'll say, "Oh, you need to do another one now or whatever." But if I have to, then I just have to find some more time to do one, and I'll uh, and I'm and I'll try again to do more videos of me playing some games in the next few days and weeks. And sorry for the delaying <laughs> of two weeks for the, from from the last video, and. Uh, I'd just like to say thanks for watching and please subscribe and if you've got any suggestions for me future videos please let me know in the comments uh, section or you can let me know through your twitter dream underscore rj uh, thanks very much and please make sure you comment subscribe and share bye for now